And you're live. Oh, I can't believe it. Oh, Who would have thought? We're live. Wonderful. If you're joining us right now, skip forward until you see the like little picture change to the links round because this is all just rubbish. This is no definitely it'll be, it'll be the great. One person but... watching it back. <laughs> mm. Our podcast discussion style. Yeah, it's true. Oh, if, if you, those eagle-eyed among you may notice that that's not that's not necessarily Jack with us today. Yes, I am not Jack Rawdon. <laughs> Who would have thought? It's the one and only Will Terrell. Hello. We might we may we may do this introduction a few times as people join, but that's okay. <laughs> um, oh, look at this. Look at this. If you are joining us, there is an international superstar in front of the show to the left of the screen. Can you work out who it is? Will thought it was a lamppost because it blends in quite well. It, it does. Um, yeah. oh, how are you doing, Will? I'm doing okay, Hugo. How are, how are you? How's, how's your year abroad? Oh, my year abroad so so abroad. Oh, so, sun, sea and sand all, all, all the time. Um, apart from all of those things, because I'm in Cornwall. You're still you're still in Durham, I take it. I am, yes, yeah. Well, are you headed back at some point? I'm going back next Saturday, leaving it late. Oh, uh, fair enough. Look, I've got you know some summatives, some formatives. I don't want to just disappear immediately. I want to celebrate a bit before I head back. That's fair enough. That's yeah, awesome. yeah, true. The Plenty Facebook post has gone live. Oh wait, well, there's the disembodied voice. I don't know. Who, I don't know whose voice that was. There it goes. Oh wait, the post has gone live. Um, I will share that on my thing and in Beatles Playtime. Do you want to share that to, do you mind sharing the SRC post to Freshers 2020? Uh, yes, share to a group. Freshers 19, Freshers 20? Freshers 20, there we go. Yeah, and, no. and the 18 loyalists of us will see it anyway, I'm sure. Don't you worry. Whew. Okay. We're off to a flying start. We've got one watching so far. I think it oh. might be me. <laughs> Just checking that the live stream works. Mm. It's like when you when you when you've lost your mobile in the house and you ring it with someone else. <laughs> you got a ring. Like, yeah, yeah. I got a missed call. <laughs> <laughs> um. Look at this go. Honestly, two. We got two viewers. Are you watching? No, but I'm going to start watching so then I can... Oh, we'll get three. That'll be brilliant, honestly. Then I can make sure that we'll respond, we can respond to the chat. Brilliant. When you... Oh, there you go. There's a bit of echo. If we... We've got at least one other viewer then, and that means we'll have a win at whatever happens. Phew. And that's, and that's what's important. Four? Blimey. What are going we? Up, going, going up in the world. Five. Raw variety show. I couldn't think of something. What gets lots of viewers? The... Uh, the I'm a FA celeb. Cup final, probably. I imagine gets a few viewers. Red Nose Day. Flip, that's a good one. Yeah. Uh, <sighs> yeah, true. Glastonbury headline. <laughs> that's, yeah, I guess that probably does as well. What What would be your set if you were headlining Glastonbury? What What would be my set? Mm. What songs would I play? Yeah. It would just be Never Forget for an hour and a half, I think. Oh, that's what we'd like to hear. Never Forget, of course, the Hillbilly Dancing. Or it, yeah. it would it would just be the choir doing their intro for, the, like, the majority. Oh, brilliant. Just, just on like, three minutes of singing. Yeah. Oh, great news. Oh, um, my brother says that he's on two devices, which, might ex- <laughs> which explains all our views. Oh, Annabelle yeah. says, excellent, a new host to Bully. He's already, um, get- he's already getting loud in the chat. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, we've got Angus as well, a, a question writer for today. We've got all sorts. If you if you if you're just tuning in, tuning in, you might notice that I'm still here, but we've got someone who isn't me. It's it's Will. Hello there. Will, what's happened to Jack? Um, so He's somewhere else. Jack thought that my superior quiz mastering skills from Freshers Week finally deserved a trial that's, run. That's fair enough. If if you're a, if you are a fresher, you might recognise Will from from quizzes previously um fun times but so we're gonna have a good time we got we got the best hosts and we've also got will uh <laughs> it's a great time um while we wait to start you may notice that there's a, a a distorted picture to the left of the screen it's an international superstar in front of the show can you work out how, who it is mm. 
And if you're looking to the left and thinking that's not an international superstar, it's a lamppost. Well, you're on the same page as I am. That's OK. Well, uh, we've all made that mistake sometimes. I've once again gone for the background. It's just a screenshot of, of Google Maps uh, Street View. I see the um, cross in the road. What a location. Oh, oh yeah, you can, can't you? It, it almost looks like I didn't actually take that in real life. Darn it. <sighs> Surely, surely that wasn't taken today because it's pitch black all the time. Ah, uh, that's true. In the deep north, in the Arctic Circle, wherever Durham is. Yeah. What was it? Seven hours of daylight here, pretty much, and that's about it. Honestly, sunsets are blooming like two p.m. these days. Yeah. Oh. Sad times. Ah. Oh. Anyway, what what we get started? Um. Well, what? Who are you? What do you do? Um, yeah, um, I go to Hill Bead. Whoa! I know, <laughs> wow. Um, and I'm a French and Spanish and a visual arts student now because I took a visual arts module this year. Oh, fun. What's visual arts? Visual arts, um, sort of part of the language department, but it's not specific on language. So my module is all about how to run an exhibition in a museum. Oh, do you have Edward Payne? No, I don't, unfortunately. He taught, he taught the similar module last year. I see. Uh, oh, fun times. Apparently, there's going to be a new Spanish museum in Bishop Auckland soon. There is, yes. Oh, can't wait. So, what I can't get enough of is Spanish art, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, why not? Um, we got some, some good stuff in store for you viewers today. We've got uh, a round on Lego. That's right. A round on Monty Python and the Holy Grail. A round on animals and a links and a wipeout. I normally I leave some to surprise, but it's fine. It's fine. We got some good stuff for you. Oh, Annabelle says uh, we should present present the quiz in Spanish. That's very kind of you to think that I can speak Spanish. Um, <laughs> Annabelle, we're in the same Spanish oral class. I think you know very well that I can't <laughs> speak Spanish either. <laughs> oh, it's okay because at the moment I'm I'm on my year abroad, so I'm getting fully immersed in the language. So no. I should be fluent within a few days. I think. It's all, it's all those tapas restaurants in Cornwall that are really coming in clutch for you. Know, you. All those tapas that just like serve tiny pasties. It's the extent of your Spanish exposure, just limited to San Miguel beer. Oh, yeah. No, yeah, yeah. San Miguel beer. I have the occasional fajita. I think that counts. <laughs> um, oh, tell you Alex, what, it's quite good Spanish. Yeah. Have you ever seen the Spanish version of The Chase? I have not. It's called El Catador. Oh and God. and it's it's very similar to the normal chase except it's in Spanish, and oh, they've all got different um sort of personalities or the, the chases. So I've only seen one episode, but um the person was the spy. Whoa, that's pretty cool. She didn't really seem much like a spy, but that's her her alias. Apparently. Yeah, not much of a spy if they're on TV. <laughs> no, true. I'm just using their real name as well. <laughs> that's okay. Uh, Angus said the Lego round is the best. I think he may be slightly biased on that. A bit of nepotism. Uh, but to be fair, it is pretty great. I've got, I've got various notes of the what's in the answers. I think I've got more notes for context in the answers for that round than any other round before. I had to write down 15 things for one of them. <laughs> well, uh... for, one, for one of the questions, we'll, you will see. All will be revealed. Yes. Um... Oh, I need to make sure that then if people contend the answers, then we have enough suitable evidence to back up what we've put down. Don't worry. We, uh, that's plenty of evidence. And also, as, as you may know, here exactly. at the Van Barquiz, we have a firm line that what, what we say is the truth is the truth, even if it's not the truth. <laughs> oh, we've got Alex Pearson in the chat as well, who also knows Spanish. Maybe we, could, maybe we should do it in Spanish. Hola! Bienvenidos al quiz. <laughs> That'll probably, I don't know. Anyway, Estamos I think. Los presentadores. Oh, that's good. Uh, Guillermo uh, y Hugo. Hugo. Hugo's not, not too difficult a name, luckily. Oh, Spanish first dates. Mm. Is that a TV show? That's then? a thing as well, apparently. Nice. I wonder if we've still got that, that French man. I wonder. <laughs> Well, anyway, I think we ought to make a start. Yeah. Um, so get a piece of paper ready to write down your answers on. Come up with a team well, name. Well, as they would say in Spanish, una hoja de papel. Whoa! <laughs> I, that's not the sort of thing I should have known how to say. 
Um, let's see who is our superstar friend of the show is before any further ado. It was, of course, Cheryl. Cheryl, it's Cheryl. Our official Cheryl, um, friend of the show, of course. There she was, looking rather different to how she was then. Um, oh, we pod counts in the chat already. That's what we like to see. Um, so, without any further ado, it we're starting off with the links round. Uh, well, how does the links round work? I don't know. So, um, gosh, almost got the sort of script in my head from Freshers Week quiz. Right. So you're going to be presented with nine questions, the, uh, the questions of which will be completely unrelated. However, your responses to those nine questions will all have a common link. So when we get to question 10, Hugo, what's it going to say? It's going to say, what's the link? What's the link? Oh, tell you what, that was an excellent script. It's much better than Jack does. No, don't tell him I said that. Um, wherever he could be on his on his geography exploration somewhere. Anyway, let's get on with it. Further. Question number one. Which soft cow's milk cheese is traditionally made in a region of northern France and is char- characterised by a rind of white mould? Tesco also sells a version hailing from Cornwall. Okay. Which soft cow's milk cheese is traditionally made in a region of northern France and is characterised by its rind of white mould? Tesco also sells a version hailing from Cornwall. I also hail from Cornwall, and I have a rind of white mould, so I, I, I relate a lot to this cheese. So I'm guessing, Hugo, you A, wrote this question, B, set the background as blue, and then C, you wore a blue jumper. Oh, yeah, come last head of quizzes colour. That's, that's only right. I did, I did set the background as blue, uh, but this is, this is a Jack Rawdon round, the, um, who, who, the late because he's not here. I don't, I don't think that's the correct use of the word. He's not, anyway, Jack's not here and he wrote the round. So thank you, Jack. Great. Got to throw in a Cornwall Easter egg. Got to, God, it's only right. Uh, let's get on with question number two. Which astronomical system feature is present in relation to Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, but not Mars? Which astronomical system feature is present in relation to Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, but not Mars? Hmm. Worth noting um, that this could be more than one thing, arguably, but only one answer will fit the link. So, so the, we're only accepting one answer. Yeah. Uranus, Uranus or Uranus? I've heard, I've heard both, but oh, both contain. The, you see, the challenge is to say Uranus and then keep a straight face. I think it is always. Thing is, Uranus has the word anus in it. So, sorry, sorry, Mum, if you're watching, but it, but Uranus just contains the word urine. So, win-win. It's, <laughs> exactly, it's a win-win. You get a, you get a giggle either way. Question number three, I suppose. What is the job title of an individual who works to protect certain typically natural areas? It can also be preceded by the word park and power. What is the job title of an individual who works to protect certain typically natural areas? It can also be preceded by the word park and power. Hmm. You can tell this is this is a, a Jack question. Typically natural. No thanks. <laughs> Next will be a question about pe- colouring pens. Oh, from geographers and country outlines and blooming flags. I think to fair, I think I did write a question about a flag. That's okay. Ge- geographers are people too. Allegedly. Um, I reckon we can go on with question number four. Question number four. Ambrim, Pinatubo, and Popocata Petal are examples of which natural feature? Ambrim, Pinatubo, and Popocata Petal are examples of which natural feature? Excellent pronunciation there. Did you have to Thanks. Google text to speech that before? Oh, honestly, I've been practicing for about half an hour straight just saying Popocata Petal. <laughs> what a word. What's oh, that? it's got an accent on. Maybe it's Popocata Petal. Oh, dear. I'm... Oh, no. Is it in Spanish? No, it's not Spanish, is it? It might be doesn't look spanish well it could it's possibly because words that end in tl are quite often from mexico yes like chocolate was originally that chocolate axolotl aguacatl that's not a that's not an english word but it... argy bargy <laughs> <laughs> uh, other words as well um croissant um <laughs> i don't know i think Let's escape. This is question number five. 
Which chess piece, along with the king and the rook, has the oldest defined movement type? Which chess piece, along with the king and the rook, has the oldest defined movement type? Honestly, the world's gone a bit chess mad lately because of the Queen's Gambit. To the extent that I also, in the Wipeout, included a, a chess question. So, I hope you're into chess. Mm. And as know. always, no chess boards allowed when you're actually answering the quiz. No. Like calculators. <laughs> or the internet in general. There we go. I think we can move on with question number six. In Stephen King's famed novel, It, what animal does the true form of Pennywise, the dancing clown, resemble? In Stephen King's famed novel, It, what animal does the true form of Pennywise, the dancing clown, resemble? Uh, poor clowns. They sort of got a bit of a harsh treatment from that, and now everyone's scared of them. And oh. from that one episode of the Sarah Jane Adventures. Oh, that that was that was um, who played? It was played by the guy from the Chase as well. Oh, was it Bradley Walsh? Yeah, Bradley Walsh. Oh, so, he's, he's he's twice in the in Doctor, the Doctor yeah. Who universe. Exactly. Oh, wow. So when when I saw that Bradley Walsh was the companion, I thought, hang on a minute, he's the Pied Piper child snatcher from Sarah Jane. Oh man! Oh, that was a very scary episode. To be fair, I know clowns really didn't do themselves many favors either by you know, scaring the living daylights out of people in parks randomly for a month either. No, true. Apparently once um, I went to a circus when I was a baby and a clown, a clown squirted a water pistol at my mum and she used me as a human shield. Um, <laughs> so thanks, mum. Yeah. <laughs> Question number seven. What is the fourth most populous island in the British Isles? What is the fourth most populous island in the British Isles? Mm. It will fit the link as well. That might help. Yeah, true. I can almost play along. I haven't had a chance to look at these before. Oh, well, feel free. Oh, you can you can be sending answers to Angus. Yeah. Ah, uh, true. Stop stealing all the Wi-Fi, Angus. <laughs> I'm streaming. Yeah. He's streaming. I'm on the Zoom. The internet's suffering. In uh, how is your internet in your house? It's actually really speedy. Um, oh. I've really I struggled. Do. Surprisingly, I've struggled to get the internet to work in the library. I just can't get the student Wi-Fi network to work for me anymore. Just goes to show. Sometimes the little things are better. I get. Oh, <laughs> I don't. I didn't mean to be a dodgy one. That's question number eight. Let's move on quickly. Um, <laughs> it's all good downhill. Which liquor is produced via the process of distilling wine? Some famous varieties include cognac and armagnac. I guess. I've not heard of that. Which liquor is uh, produced via the process of distilling wine? Some famous varieties include cognac and armagnac. Hmm. I thought cognac was a drink in its own right. Me too. And this is different to what I thought was the truth, so I might just... Okay, yeah, we're good. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Angus defends himself. Yeah. Saying he's uh, he's watching the stream at the same time. But it's okay. Oh wait, he he's I think twenty seconds. Oh yeah, that was a fun thing about this is that we're about twenty seconds ahead of people watching. Or rather you're seeing what we're saying twenty seconds after we say it. So yeah, you'll say something in the YouTube chat. We'll see it instantly, but you'll only hear our response to it twenty seconds later. Exactly. So here's question number nine. Which cape in the extreme south of the South American continent is notorious for its dangerous sailing conditions, but was a notable milestone on many past shipping routes? Which cape in the extreme south of the South American continent is notorious for its sailing conditions, but was notable milestone on many shipping routes? And I think we mean a geographical cape rather than a, fas a fashion cape. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Questions to be thinking about. And remember, there's a link between all of them. What could it be? Speaking of what could it be, question number 10. What's the link? Question number 10, what's the link? There's a link between the first nine answers. But what is it? And we're running through those again. 
So which soft cow's milk cheese is traditionally made in the region of northern France? Uh, question number two, which astronomical system feature is present in Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, but not Mars? Question number three, what is the job title of an individual who will work to protect certain typically natural areas? Question number four, Ambrim, Pinatubo, and Public Atapetl are examples of what? Um, which chess piece, along with the king and rook, has the oldest defined movement type? Question number six. In it, uh, what is the true form of Pennywise the Clown? What does it resemble? Question number seven. What is the fourth most populous island of the British Isles? Question number eight. Uh, which liquor is produced via the process of distilling wine? Uh, examples include cognac. Um, what, is, what is the cape in the extreme south of the South American continent? And what is the link? Ooh. Highlight. The first round. Highlight of my, th well, the highlight of my week is just someone saying, what's the link on a Thursday evening? You should say it more often. I think when, so when anyone makes a list, you should always say, what's the link? Just to see, keep them on their toes. Right, next up is, is this round? It's, it's the Lego round. It's the Lego round, right. This is, this is, it's, it's big brain time, people. Um, Lego masterminded round. by Will and Angus. Yeah. Uh, let's. Let's make sure. Let's go yeah, ahead. Shout out to my housemate, Blangus Webb Hammond. Right, question one. Unveiled on Black Friday this year, a model of which landmark is the largest official Lego set by number of pieces? Ooh. Background unrelated. Background unrelated, yeah. That's just that's Lego Durham Cathedral, actually. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Have they got a little mini figure of Thor, do you think? Oh, I would have thought so. There you go. Angus is getting very excited in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> He's getting them all right. Oh, so it's kicking off. So which landmark? If you if you're guessing, guess a landmark which you think might be something that they'd release as a Lego set. Mm, that would have lots right. of pieces as well. Mm, that would help. Question number two. Question number two. True or false? Lego manufactures more tires than Goodyear over a year. Oh gosh. Good year, of course, a tire company. Mm. Oh, true or false? 50 50, I presume. Yeah. Unless it's trick. <laughs> no, it's 50 50. That's good. Do you think Goodyear have had a good year? <laughs> oh, I'm not sure if anyone's had a good year, to be honest. I can't imagine. I'd probably Goodyear have had quite a bad year because people have been driving less and so have less had less need for tires. I'm sure Lego's had a great year, though. Yeah, definitely. Everyone can see Lego sets. Mm, there we go. So true or false? Hence why this round exists. My Lego passion has been reignited. Brilliant, brilliant news. Question three. Between what ages can you earn a Legoland driving license? So we need two numbers here, please, people. One preferably different from the other as well. So yeah, okay. between what ages? One and one. <laughs> like, like a Lego set when it says suitable for ages three to 99. So when you turn 100, you just can't do that. <laughs> oh, that's so sad. Well, there's Lego fans when just on the lead up to their 100th birthday having to having to get all their Lego out of the way. <laughs> I think articulate. No, something like that is eight to 108, which is a bit. Is, you're, good, you're good going if you're 108, 108. Yeah, playing still be oh. playing. Uh, question number four, I suppose. Question number four. How tall is the tallest structure built with Lego bricks? And this doesn't have to be a Lego set. This can be someone in their back garden piling a bunch of bricks on top of each other. Mm. And we've kindly given you five metres either way. Mm. So yes, metres, please. Not feet. We don't do that here. Uh, no, except for some other questions, which we ask for it for you in feet. Um, <laughs> how, how tall are you, Will? Um, six four on a good day. <laughs> when you've got a spring in your step. Yeah, depends what shoes I'm wearing, but yeah, six Ooh. four. Ah, uh, I'm I'm actually six four and a half, so. Oh yes. Uh, it's a bit awkward. Sorry but to be. Spanish students are just the tallest ones. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm actually just your height plus half. Um, in, in whoever I'm talking to, so that's true of when I'm with Jack. Whoever, the only two people, obviously me, me, Will, and Jack. The only three people. 
Um, question five. I don't know what I was just talking about. Question five. Right. How many boss fights are there in Lego Star Wars The Complete Saga? Mm. I've got them all written down for when we do the answers. Don't you worry. So if, if you have any any claims to contend with my response bearing in mind i pretty much played lego star wars to find the answers <laughs> <laughs> incredible that's commitment yeah and boss by boss fight do are we going to tell them what a boss fight is or are we just going to go on you might need to define it for the answer so boss fight means when you're going to get a cut scene and then the enemy's heart shows in the middle of the screen rather than just killing like a droid you have to have the enemy character's hearts pop up in the middle oh i see so okay. they don't necessarily even have to die oh interesting well useful definition and um, we're not giving you any either way for this one so we just want a number get a number so get your um, out. is this for the wii um it's on any console actually Same any game. console no, ah, handy right question number six Question number six. Who has fallen in the river in Lego City? Yeah, what a question. It's, it's a great reference. So we just want, according to, you know... According to the question. According to the question. In the river in Lego City. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good defence if people call, say our questions are wrong. Just say it's according to the question. <laughs> you are tried for posing the wrong answer. Well... <laughs> No, just read the question. No, are we just in the context of the question. Um, <laughs> Wonderful. That man in the background, I reckon he knows is he likes his Lego. Well, you'd hurt you probably as he's building a Lego cathedral. Lego cathedral. There's there's not going to be an instruction booklet that tells you how to build Durham Cathedral, is there? No, I don't think I don't think that's actually made by the. <laughs> that's a big box for it to come in. Um, question number seven. Question seven. On Black Friday 2018, what 100 minute video could come up as an advert on YouTube? Annabelle. Yeah, this, Annabelle said. This round Annabelle is, said, this round is more rigged than the American election. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, ne needless to say, um, if you wrote this round, you shouldn't be answering it, Angus. Mm -hmm. And also, Annabelle, I think your comment has been censored as it contains mystery. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you get the tweets have the, what's it, the restriction <laughs> may contain... Yeah, it's, it's, it's been flagged by, by YouTube, Annabelle's comment. Um, <laughs> question number eight. Question number eight. What facial, facial feature is missing from the head of a standard Lego figure? Um... And I'm going to say that your face doesn't include the sides of your head. Okay. Based on the answer we've got. Yeah, face is... Face, you know? Face. Like, your, you know... <laughs> this little <laughs> honest, window I feel like here. most people know what their face is. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe you don't, and that's okay too. Oh, a few. Angus is doing dinner. He is, yeah. No, it smells lovely, whatever it is. <laughs> uh, question number nine. Question number nine. In Lego the Hobbit video game, what character from the books you're allowed to play as in the one million stud bonus level? Of course, the Lego game's famed for having one million stud levels. Um, separate from the from the story book mode, I guess. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Oh, is that... Uh... Interesting. So you don't have to waste time walking around and picking them up. They immediately just go into your coin total. But it's quite hard to find all one million of them. Um, no, I'm sure. Yeah, when we when we first did it at the beginning of term on the on Lego Star Wars, we were wandering around this map for twenty minutes trying to figure out what we hadn't destroyed yet. Got to you. Got to find those those pots and little Lego things, you know. Mm. What a pastime! And you haven't seen this this next question well because I, we had a little we had I, I had made a little mistake, but it's fine. Here's question number ten. Which of the following is not a current Lego theme? A. Stranger Things. B. Game of Thrones. Or C. Friends. I haven't mm. seen it, but during my research, I probably got the answer. Yeah, you probably have. Yeah. 
and also because it was Black Friday and I was searching around trying to see if I could get a Lego Millennium Falcon for a discount price. Oh, did could you? No, no, no. Oh, too bad. Although they did have the discounted price, most Lego pe- set ever, peep by piece. For about oh, man. So, Fair yeah. enough. Well, there we go. I'll just I'll just run through those again. So, um, which is the which landmark is the largest fi- official Lego set by number of pieces? Um, true or false? Lego manufacturers produce more tires than Goodyear every year. Question number three: Between what ages can you learn? Can you earn a Lego Land driving license? Question number four: How tall is the tallest structure built with Lego bricks? You know, five meters either way. Question number five: How many boss fights are there in Lego Star Wars: The Complete Saga? Question number six: Who has fallen in the river in Lego City? Uh, question number seven on Black Friday 2018 what 100 minute video I think my, I think okay that's fine uh, could come up as YouTube advert question right. number eight which facial feature is missing from the head of a standard uh, Lego figure and question number nine um, which character from the book can you play in the uh, a million stud bonus level in Lego The Hobbit and which of these is not a Lego theme Stranger Things Game of Thrones or Friends and I do mean Friends the TV show to clarify not just mm-hmm. like Friends and you know? theme, we mean um, category like Lego Star Wars, Lego Hobbit, not exactly, yeah, intro music. Um, and here we go with the next round. Thank you, Charlotte, for this round. It's anim, anim multiple choice, anim, anim multiple choice, An, animal <laughs> and multiple choice. See what we did there. Um, I must take credit for that because I don't think Charlotte would want to take credit for the name. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to show you a fact about an animal. And then three animals that it could be about, and we want to tell you, and you, we want you to tell us. No, you don't have to tell us. Write down your piece of paper. You know how the quiz works. Um, <laughs> it's not very complicated. It's just a multiple choice round. Yeah, write your answers in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> so everyone else can see that we handy. Okay, right. Question number one. Which has which of these animals has no expressive muscles in its face and so always appears to be smiling? Is it A, koala, B, sloth, or, or C, quokka? It, um, which has no expressive muscles in its face, so all, always appears to be smiling. Is A, koala, B, sloth, or C, quokka? Mm, are you an animal fan, Will? I am. Mostly guinea pigs, actually. Oh, I love a guinea pig. Oh. Oh, so, really um, under- oh, so underrated and incredible ears. Incredible. And just the noises as well, because oh. mum's not a fan of dogs. Dad's not a fan of cats. So we had guinea pigs, and honestly, the sweetest... But all of the, what were your guinea pigs called? They were um, so my first guinea pig was called Shuey after Michael Schumacher, big F one fan. <laughs> that was that was I, I experienced it after Chewbacca, but like no no. And then the other one was called Tango. That's a good name. Yeah. Well, he lasted a while as well. Tango, what a trooper! Right, let's go. Question number two, and we'll get back to guinea pigs. George Bush received which of these as a present when he, which was then donated to Cincinnati Zoo? Mm. Uh, is it a Komodo dragon, a Tarsia, or a Sun Bear? Don't George think... Bush, president, I don't know which one, but one of them, received which of these as a, pres- as a present, which he then donated to Cincinnati Zoo? Is it a Komodo dragon, a Tarsia, or Sun Bear? You can write the animal or you can just write the letter. Mm. Uh, my guinea pigs, um, sort of my sister's guinea pigs, but also sort of mine, were called um, Papa Dom and Dorothy. Um, oh, yes. Some some superb animals. Those. I want a guinea pig. I know. I really want. I, every time Christmas rolls around now, I ask for a guinea pig. I'm 19 years yeah. old. I can't. I can't wait to to be a proper adult. Not like I am now. Whatever I am. Uh, so I can just get get a guinea pig. Yeah. Well, right. Question... We're parents. <laughs> What are you going to do? Question number three. Which of these are one of the three species which undergoes menopause? Oh, nice fun one. Uh, is it humpback whale, hammerhead shark, or killer whale? Which of these are one of the only three species which undergoes menopause? A, humpback whale, B, hammerhead shark, or C, killer whale? So the other one's humans, and then what's the other one? That's, ooh, who knows? Maybe it's guinea pig. It could be. <laughs> it could be. We don't know, but I wonder. Time will tell. Actually, no, it won't, because I don't think... You can look it up after after the quiz. After the quiz. After the quiz. Only then will we allow your internet. Yeah, no cheating, please. Right, question number four. 
Which of these attach to each other when sleeping to prevent drifting apart? Is it A, dolphin, B, otter, or C, walrus? Which of these attach to each other when, when sleeping to prevent drifting apart? Is it A, dolphin, B, otter, or C, walrus? So either way, some very wholesome animals on this round. Very wholesome. Thank you, Charlotte, for these wholesome animals. And a very bright-eyed cat on the screen as well. That cat's really looking into my soul. <laughs> it's a hypno cat. Ah. Uh, well, question five. Which of these does not have three eyelids? A. Aardvark. B. Snake. Or C. Rat. Which of these does not have three eyelids? A. Aardvark. B. Snake. Or C. Rat. I wonder. Aardvark's a difficult word to look at. It doesn't look right. Mm, it, it, breaks all, it breaks all my rules for words. Two A's at the beginning. RK at the end. Well, that's just fine. But and then there's this rogue V just in the middle. It's a rogue V, honestly. Only, people would be annoyed if you did that in Scrabble. And the only, so the only vowel is the letter A. Surely you can't play Aardvark in Scrabble. You need three A's. I reckon you could, but you might need an A already down there. Or a blank, maybe. Mm, a blank, yeah. Ah, mad. Anyway, question number six. After, after marvelling at the word Aardvark. Um, which of these has three hearts? Is it a shrimp, an octopus, or a mole? Which of these has three hearts? Is it a shrimp, an octopus, or a mole? Mm. Doctor's got nothing on this animal. No. The Time Lord of, of whatever these three animals are. Ah. Three hearts, you feel like they get in the way. <laughs> and you have math. I guess you just have a very low BPM. Especially, these are quite small animals as well. Yeah, it's true. like a whale, where you can... You, you, you can get away with that. Yeah. Oh, whales must have massive hearts. Isn't it like the size of a hatchback? Their, or their lungs, Is that right? It? Their lungs Why? are like the size of a, like a beetle, a VW beetle. All right, you hope like a VW beetle rather than an actual beetle. Or, or like Paul McCartney. <laughs> Paul McCartney. A whale's heart is the size and shape of Paul McCartney. <laughs> Question number seven. <laughs> Which of these animals is known as which group of animals is known as a pandemonium? Is it bats, alligators, or parrots? Which group of animals is known as a pandemonium? Bat, alligator, or parrot? Mm, not a panda. That was surprising to me. <laughs> pandemonium also, I imagine, is quite difficult to get in Scrabble. I feel like that's what, what they would call it when you go to the circus and they've just got a whole act based around Le Creuset. <laughs> nice. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> oh, yeah, we like these, these crockery puns. A human can crawl through the arteries in a whale's heart. There you I, go. That's a good uh, That's a good stat for Annabelle. Well, um, question number eight. Which of these has the shortest lifespan? A, mayfly, B, fruit fly, or C, mosquito? Which of these are the shortest life lifespan? A, mayfly, B, fruit, fly, or C, mosquito? Mayfly, June fly, July fly, October fly, who knows? One, one of those. Oh, I suppose it must be February fly. <laughs> um, except on a leap, yeah. Uh, Annabelle, yeah, that was the useful as you just said, from Annabelle, according, apparently a human can, tra- can crawl through the arteries in a whale's heart. But that doesn't mean a human should crawl through the arteries. Exactly. How did they find out? That, that was possible. <laughs> Look, Dave, I've got an idea. I just want to try something. Hear me out. I'm a, I'm a real scientist. I've got to test this thing. Is, is that part of Jonah and the whale? Oh, I think so. <laughs> he just tries to. He goes to the for the, for the jungle gym in the in the arteries of a of a whale. Um, question number uh, nine. For some reason, I need to jog my remem- memory to work out what number came after eight. Uh, which of these has fingerprints almost indistinguishable from humans? Which of these has fingerprints almost indistinguishable from humans? Is it koala, cat, or dog? Koala, cat, or dog? The big three, in many ways. That well-known other pet 
Mm. Are you a cat person, a dog person, or perhaps a koala person? <laughs> everyone's a koala person, surely. Oh, everyone's fingers are one of these. Although apparently they can give you chlamydia, humans. So stay away from them, humans. Um, question number 10. Which of these is the most venomous snake? No, that's not what it says. Okay. Which of these is the most venomous fish? Which of these is the most venomous fish? I just saw venomous and thought it said snake. Is it the stonefish, the stingray, or the lionfish? Which of these is the most venomous fish? Stonefish, stingray, or lionfish? Who knows? None of them, in fact, are snakes. At time of recording. Mm. Speaking uh, of snake species, yet yeah, also fish. What what were electric eels called before the the discovery of electricity? Oh, oh, like oh, that's fun. Like lightning sausages. <laughs> I might call, I might start calling them lightning sausages anyway. <laughs> that's such a good alternative. <laughs> um, I'm going to run through these again. Which of these has no expressive muscles in its face or is supposed to be smiling? Is it a koala, a sloth, or a quokka? Um. Which of these did George Bush receive as a present? Is it Komodo dragon, Tarsier, or a sun bear? Question number three. Which of these undergoes menopause? Is it a humpback whale, a hammerhead shark, or a killer whale? Question number four. Um, which, uh, which of these attach to each other when sleeping? Is it dolphin, otter, or walrus? Question number five. Which of these does not have three eyelids? Aardvark, snake, or rat? Question number six. Which of these has, the, has three hearts? Is it a shrimp, an octopus, or a mole? Question number seven. Which, of the, which group of animals is known as a pandemonium? Is it of bats, of alligators, or of parrots? Question number eight. Which of these has the shortest lifespan? Mayfly, fruit fly, or mosquito? Question number nine. Which of these has a fingerprint almost distinct, indistinguishable from humans? Is it a koala, cat, or dog? Question number ten. Which of these is the most venomous fish? Is it a stonefish, stingray, or a lionfish? And that's the end of Animaltable Choice. <laughs> on thank you, with, thank you, Charlotte, once again. And on with this next round, which is on Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Oh my gosh. So I haven't run a Monty Python and the Holy Grail because last week, I believe, Annabelle got the best team name. And so got to pick a round for this week. And she picked Monty Python and the Holy Grail. I will do a little disclaimer and say, I think in the past we have ha already had a round about Monty Python and the Holy Grail. So in the writing of it, I went slightly, I went slightly more like production rather than plot. Okay. It's just it's around either way. So on we go. Take it, take us away, Will. Popular request, right? Question one: Which year saw the release of Monty Python and the Holy Grail? It also saw the leadership election victory of the first female leader of the Conservative Party. Big year. Have you seen Monty Python and the Holy Grail? I have a long time ago. Um, mm, same, I think. Yeah. Um, of course, standouts being the harmless bunny rabbit. Well, not, well, that that's not, right. let's not spit, say too many things. Oh, okay. okay that I is the right movie, right. though. Is it? Because all the Monty Pythons almost blend into one. I was watching the life of Brian Biggers Dickers seeing the, the other <laughs> day. Why are you laughing? <laughs> Get some more trivia on that scene after this next question. <laughs> yeah, nice. Question two. Two of the members of Monty Python, Terry Jones and Michael Palin, met at Oxford University, Boo, where they performed together in which student comedy group? Probably only managed to get to Oxford because they got rejected from Durham. Exactly. Um, yes, yeah, so um, the life of Brian, people may remember the um, the biggest dickers scene. Um where all the guys. was family show. Yes, well, it's, it's just it's just the name of his friend, and there's nothing wrong with that, surely. Um, and um, so the extras, the reason why it's such good acting is the extras were told that they wouldn't get paid if they broke into laughter. Oh, that was all they were told. They weren't oh, told wow. the scene. So yeah. Yeah, that's good. There you go. Some good. Some good facts you've come prepared with oh angus says that um he's gonna make you watch it oh, fine by me <laughs> uh question number three. Oh, sorry it's you yes question number three one scene features a slow zoom of the dark forest of ewing 
in reality, this was a still photograph of Mount Buffalo National Park in which Commonwealth country? Is it Dark Forest of Ewing, Ewing? Who knows? Ewing? I Ewing. Know. Sounds like it's Ewing. Mm. Mm, little fact about national parks for you. I don't. <laughs> That's all right. Jack would, surely. He would. He loves national parks, is that boy. There we go. So, question number four. Question four. Okay. The Pythons received funding for the film from 10 different investors. Three of these were the rock band Genesis Pink Floyd and which band headed up by Robert Plant and Jimmy Page? Hmm. You may notice that these don't necessarily require much knowledge of the actual film. It's sort of like a general knowledge round. But that's what, that's fine. It's fine. Lovely bit of rain out there for all of everyone who's still in Durham. I think we've got a clear night here in, here in Kano. Yeah, it's a bit dark. Is, is, it, is it just the tier one weather as well? It's just... The tier one weather, it, it lifts up. Honestly, it's... It's the dream. Just us in the Isle of Wight just living it up. <laughs> I don't think I've done anything which I couldn't do in any other day today, to be fair. <laughs> Annabelle's fuming that this isn't very <laughs> very related to the film. It will get there it will get more related. Anyway, question number five. Question five. Which Knight of the Round Table in legend and in the film is an anagram of A had Grails? Hmm. A had Grails. How are you doing anagrams? You don't have to do it in your head. You can write down the letters if you want. Mm. But you, don't well, have to. you can always come back to it, remember. Don't forget, you can just press your True. little rewind button on YouTube. Until, until we say pens down, you can do what you like. To be fair, you can do what you like anyway. Um, free country. Free country. Apart, actually, no, coming, I think at the moment you, you can do less than normal, to be fair. <laughs> as long as you come to the Vern Bar quiz, we're fine. We're Ooh, that's fine. And, and, and maintain a, a distance from everyone. Um, there we go. Question number six. Question six. The holy what of Antioch is used to kill the ferocious rabbit of Cambridge. I'm awful at these pronunciations. That's fine. I think k -Banog, I'm not sure that's a real thing anyway. k -Banog. It is also a weapon in the Worms video game franchise. Antioch, I believe, but I like your sort of Scottish pronunci pronunciation. Holy what of Antioch. Antioch. <laughs> Antioch. Oh, there's your rabbit. Yes. Nice. Is that the rabbit as well in the um the background image in the top left almost? Or is that some sort of horse of Troy esque looking thing? Oh, that's the Trojan rabbit. Oh, the Trojan rabbit, is that what it is? Okay, I wow, so. I really do need to rewatch this film. <laughs> I, I only know any any of this because I had to read the Wikipedia page quite extensively for this. <laughs> that well-known, truthful source. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's fine. It's all right. Uh, question number seven. Question seven. In 2005, the film was adapted into a Broadway musical. What is the name of this musical? Classic Americans <laughs> taking the British idea. <laughs> Luminette. I think it might have been the actual Monty Python people who adapted it, possibly. Okay. This, this, I feel like Annabelle won't mind this question. And that's that. All our aim in all of these questions is just to to not anger Annabelle. <laughs> Although the most recent message in the live chat is Annabelle saying, "I am fuming." <laughs> that was fine. Right. Question number eight. Okay, sometimes referred to as the Holy Grail, the Stanley Cup, or La Coupe Stanley, is a championship trophy for which team sports? Well, great pronunciation. Do you do, do, you do French? We. Oui. What? <laughs> Fly me. Oh my gosh, you must do French there. Oh gosh, fluent. So what sport is the Stanley Cup in? Arguably also not really a Monty Python related question. It's fine. Right. So 
I think that's a very straightforward question. Question number nine. Question number nine. Stemming from the name of this comedy group, which adjectival neologism means fast... Farcically oh, surreal or absurd. <laughs> See, I study languages but can't speak English. It can also mean typical of or suited to a particular programming language. Mm. So, uh, I'll read that again just because <laughs> I definitely didn't read it the first time properly. That's Stemming from the name of this comedy group, which adjectival neologism means farcically surreal or absurd. I got it right, I think. It can also mean typical of or suited to a particular programming language. Mm, what could it be? And you might need might need a deep breath for the next question. <laughs> Annabelle said, "Gonna get all my friends to dislike this video, so you're demonetized." <laughs> oh, we got three likes. On that oh, note, well. so you're gonna need you're gonna need a whole lot of friends. Tell you what, <laughs> right? You ready for this next question, Will? Deep breath. Yes, question ten. Deep breath, everyone. Okay, Monty Python and the Holy Grail was released, was the topic of the fourth round of the Vern Bar Quiz on the 3rd of December, 2020. Two rounds before this was a round on Lego. Retail giant John Lewis and Partners is a large seller of Lego merchandise. John Lewis product code 87020301 is the Keats wingback armchair, probably named after 19th century poet John Keats. His ballad, La Belle Dame Sans Merci, was published in the year 1819. 1819, coincidentally, was also the year that featured the removal of certain religious rules by King Kamehameha II, which resulted in the first of what type of Hawaiian celebration or feast? Oh, look at him go, baptism of fire, nicely done. Um, and credit to the, the Lego boys for this question, um, who, 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 wrote a, who wrote an excellent last question because I asked them to with a certain answer, and then I realised I accidentally asked them to do it for the wrong round. Um, so there's a little subtle segue at the top you might notice. I think there's a lot of segues throughout the question, let's be honest. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's what we do best. Right, let's go through these again. Um, so which year saw the release of Monty Python and the Holy Grail? Question number two. Um, Terry Jones and Michael Palin met, uh, performed together in which student comedy group at Oxford University? Question number three. Um, where... In which Commonwealth country is Mount Buffalo National Park? Question number four. Um, which band was headed up by Robert Plant and Jimmy Page? Question number five. Um, which Night of the Round Table is an anagram of Ahad Grails? Grails, see? <laughs> Question number six. The holy what of Antioch is used to kill the ferocious rabbit of K. Bannock, probably. Uh, question number nine. The film was... Uh, uh, question number seven, sorry. I don't know what I'm doing there. Uh, was, the film was adapted into which Broadway musical? Um, question number eight. The Stanley Cup is championship is trophy for which team sport? Question number nine. Um, which adjective neologism means fastly surreal or absurd? And um, question number ten. Um, which this this one that we know about? So well. There. <laughs> there we go. It's on the screen. And I hope you're ready for this. But coming up now is the final round of the quiz. It's the wipeout. Can you believe it? Brilliant. Will, how does the wipeout work? So, wipeout round. The way this works is you have 10 completely unrelated questions. Now, um, you can choose to answer all those 10 and risk it for a chocolate biscuit. But if you get one question wrong, remember you wipe out. So, you can play it, you know, confidently. Answer eight. Maybe get eight points or get one wrong. You score zero. Or you can leave your answer blank. If, you don't, if you're not entirely sure the answer, maybe leave your answer blank and then that won't go against you. It's a tough round. It's a tough round. So general knowledge, get one wrong, zero points for the entire round. Anyway, here we go, question number one. What type of animal make up the genus Cygnus? Or, or Cygnus, possibly, as it looks Latin. Or Chignus, I don't know. Which type of animal make up the genus Cygnus? Uh, this this film in the background um, doesn't look particularly high budget, but stars the likes of Sean Connery really? in this in this film. Yeah. Sir could, Billy. I guess you could say starred the likes. Of Sean. Mm. Um. 
This is the one that Jack, Jack uh, urged me to include in the background last week. Uh, so here we go, question number two. Maybe you know that first one. Question number two, how many vowels, here vowels are defined as the letters A, E, I, O, and U, are in the names of the four main Teletubbies combined? How many vowels are in the names of the four main Teletubbies combined? So if you write down all the Teletubbies' names. Yeah. How the many main vowels? Teletubbies, so there's some rogue disowned Teletubbies. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what there are, Will. There's, some, there's like an offcut called the Teeny Tubbies. Which have re- which have names like um, Ru Ru, Da Da, um, Ping. This honestly, the Teletubby Wikipedia page. Some estranged Teletubby family members. Yeah, and so in, in a group chat, I'm in with some friends. We've all got na- we've all got names named after the the teeny tubbies. Okay. I think I'm, I'm Umby Pumby. <laughs> yes. Um, question number three. Some scholars have suggested that El Hanan, son of Jair, was the originally listed slayer of which figure present is in Islam, Christianity, and Judaism. Some scholars have suggested that El Hanan, son of Jair, was the originally listed slayer of which figure pre- uh, present in Islam, Christianity, and Judaism. Um, if you would like a source, um, Barak Halpam, for example, said this. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm sure you wanted a source. Yeah, if you wanted some sauce, there's ketchup in the fridge. Lovely, lovely. Put that at the end. Put that in your footnotes. <laughs> For my sauces cited, ketchup, mayonnaise, <laughs> guac. With two oh, C's. Very Spanish. That's much, that's much more like it. Um, question number four. The Regency period occurred during the reign of which British monarch? The Regency period occurred during the reign of which British monarch? Hmm. What could it be? You've Im- immediately gone into your monarch voice, have you? Oh yeah, sorry. What could it be? Oh, oh yes. <laughs> the Regency oh, period yeah. occurred during the reign of which British monarch? Brilliant. I wasn't even going to attempt a royal accent. Um, I wouldn't say that was necessarily one, but it was a fun time either way. Um, <laughs> it's a big now. Question number five. What is the name of this Christmas album released in 1970 by the Jackson 5? What is the name of this Christmas album released in 1970 by the Jackson 5? So we want the words that are covered up by the by the green and red box on the on the screen there. Oh, I thought the title was like, seven question marks. <laughs> yeah, I know. Catchy. I don't know how you say it. You just have to sort of make a noise like, hmm? <laughs> well, I'll you like this. I'll do the arms. That's good. Um, yeah, there we go. Question number six. Who wrote the novel Middlemarch? Plain and simple question, classic quiz question. Question number six. Who wrote the novel Middlemarch originally? Mm. I don't know what I mean originally, as if someone else rewrote it. I, I think I made the mistake of not having a glass of water by my side for this entire quiz. Risky business. Angus, Angus, bring me some water. <laughs> I hope he does in a, in a nice, lovely carafe with a with an ice cube. He's definitely just going to bring me a like a massive bottle of wine or something as a, as a piss <laughs> some salt water. <laughs> question number seven: How many white stars appear on the flag of Australia? I promise you a flag question. Here it is: How many white stars appear on the flag of Australia? And um. I'm not including the Union Jack. I'm not saying the Union Jack isn't a star. Obviously, obviously, but just in case you're being... I can hear the tap running. (gasps) Ah! What what a kind kind fellow. Who knows? Who knows what could be happening? He might be going for pasta round two. Oh, maybe. So we go. Question... Many footsteps. (laughs) (laughs) Question number eight. While we see what happens. Oh, here's a here's a one that might take some thinking. Fine checkmate for white. Fine checkmate for white. So it's white's turn, and there's one move that you can make which will result in check. And we want you to notate it as the piece, the name of the piece you move, and the tile you move it to. There's some uh, it's some grid references along the bottom and side. Hmm. Here's another 
if, if you've been watching the Queen's Gambit, perhaps you're thoroughly into chess at the moment. Or even if not, what move can you make which would lead to checkmate for white? I'm trying to have a go at it myself. I'm awful at chess. This is not. It's tricky. A lot of things to be looking at. Oh my gosh, I can hit. He's coming up the stairs. <gasps> Come in. Your water finds stuff. Oh, thank you very oh. much, Mr. Blangus. Look at that. Here's How everyone. wholesome. Friend of, friend of the show, Angus Webham in there. Um, Annabelle suggests that for this question, you could just put the answer as no. I'm going to tell you this, Annabelle. If you put the answer to this as no, you've wiped out. And that's zero points of the entire round. And now that she suggested that, she has to wipe out, I feel. Oh, yeah. Obviously, Annabelle, without, without saying, automatically Annabelle every week, automatically gets zero for the quiz, for, for being so hateful towards us. No, not really, Annabelle. We appreciate your custom. Thank you um, again. Question number nine. Who won the 2019 series of Love Island? We've had Middlemarch to Love Island. Here we go. Who won the 2019 series of Love Island? So after two first names. I do know this. You do? I do. Nice. nice. Um, I was interrailing while that was the Love Island final. So we streamed it to our phones sat in a bar in budapest oh very nice cocktails and we we're watching the love island final where'd you go into railing um so we kept it relatively n normal so vienna budapest prague berlin amsterdam oh very nice trains all the way no flying uh well i went i, I went to me and my friend went into railing I'll tell you about it shortly. After question number 10. Question number 10. How tall is the UK Prime Minister in feet and inches? You can have one inch either way. Question number 10. How tall is the UK Prime Minister in feet and inches? I went to Strasbourg, Barcelona, Budapest, Prague, Berlin, and Amsterdam. Similar to you. But Barcelona. We had, to, we had to put a flight in there. Nice. Sometimes. Good way to travel. So language students have got to travel, you know. That's one of the requirements, apparently. Oh, what a shame. Oh, no, I need to go on holiday for my studies. <laughs> oh, what a disaster. Uh, right, I'll go run through these again. Reminder, if you get one question wrong, that's zero for the entire round, but you can leave stuff blank. Uh, question number one, what animal makes up the genus Cygnus? Question number two, how many vowels are in the name of the four main Teletubbies combined? Question number three, um, Elhanan, son of Jahir, is suggested by some to have been the original slayer of which figure present in Islam, Christianity and Judaism? Question number four, the Regency period occurred during the reign of which British monarch? Question number five, what was the name of this Christmas album? Question number six, who wrote the novel Middle March? Question number seven, how many white stars appear in the flag of Australia? Question number eight, find checkmate for white. Question number nine, who won the 2019 series of Love Island? And question number 10, how tall is the UK Prime Minister in feet and inches? You know, one inch either way. So there we go. That's all the main questions to the quiz out of the way. So pen Make down, I guess, friends. ladies and gentlemen, and, and friends of all kind. Um, yeah. So here it is. I guess it's time for the answers. Wonderful. So here we go. So we'll go ahead with the answers to these questions. So the links round. So answers to the links round. Uh, which soft cow's milk cheese is traditionally made in the region of northern France? Brie. Well, as they don't say in France, because that's nice. Free. Um, right, which astronomical system feature is present in relation? Yada, yada, yada. Ring? Mm, what could the link be? What is the job type of an individual who works with tech certain areas? Ranger, park ranger. Or power ranger, as a. <laughs> but light years. Is an eat star ranger, star command. Oh, Ambrim, Pinatubo, and Popper. Go on, Hugo, what was it? Oh, the Castle Petal. That's it, Volcano. It's a volcano. Which chess piece has the oldest fine movement type? Knight. A knight, there we go. Stephen King's famous novel, It. What, cat, what animal is Pennywise? Spider. What is the fourth most populous island of the British Isles? Isle of Wight. The Isle of Wight, I think it's 
I think it's Britain and then Ireland and then Portsea Island and then the Isle of Wight. Well, and then the Isle of Man, probably. Portsea be... Island is what Portsmouth's on. Is it? Yeah. Does that count? Kind of Interesting. Which liquor is produced by the same process of distilling wine? Brandy. And which cape in the extreme South American continent is notorious for dangerous sailing conditions? And that is Cape Horn. Cape Horn, classic. And the link. What's the link? Lord of the Rings. Classic. Lord of the Rings link. I'm going to run through those and see. They're all thematically or grammatically or linguistically, whatever, related to Lord of the Rings. I'll just explain what I mean. So Bree, of course, there's a town called Bree, although they're spelled differently. Uh, there's a ring, if you didn't know, Lord of the Rings. Uh, Aragorn is a ranger. Um, there's a volcano called, called Mount Doom, in it, I believe. There's knights, I, I guess. Um, it's bat fighting. <laughs> probably. Um, spider. There's a spider. Uh, Shelob, sorry. Oh, Shelob, sorry, that was poor for me. Um, there's whites. Uh, I think this is the name of a, a mythical creature. Brandy, buck and brandy wine, that sort of thing. Uh, there's a horn that they blow to get attention, um, which is generally the purpose of a horn. Um, and it was Lord one of the rings. rings. Lord of the Rings. So then we had a leg around. Um, this is apparently the Colosseum. Yes. The Colosseum, which has 9,036 pieces. The previous record was the Lego Star Destroyer, which is somewhere around 7,500. So oh, really blimey. playing the game. Gosh, that's got a big, big in advance. Um, uh, so it's true. Apparently, Lego produce 318 million tires per year. That's quite a few. That's enough for, for several for every person in Britain. And interestingly uh, as well, so Lego military vehicles don't come with tires because Lego don't want to encourage people to reenact military scenes with the sets. Oh, interesting. Oh, okay. Sort of keep it PG. There we go. Of, co of course, the age range is three to... Uh, no, it's, what, <laughs> it's not what it says at all. It says six to 13. Six to 13 is the age range. Um, the tallest structure built with Lego bricks was uh, 35 metres, 35.5 metres. So you can, have, you can have anywhere from 30 to 40. Anywhere from 30 to 40. Um, the boss fights, there are... 15. There are 15. Would you like me to read them for you? I would love you to read them for you, guys. It's, of course, Darth Maul, Zam, Zam Wessel Speeder, Jango Fett, Jango Fett again, Count Dooku, Count Dooku again, General Grievous, Obi-Wan vs. Anakin, Imperial Spy, uh, Darth Vader Vision, Darth Vader Actual, Boba Fett, Rancor, Boba Fett again, and the Emperor. Wow. There and you if go. you have any doubts, please question me. Go on. Yeah, do you don't need to get you don't need to ask me twice to talk about Lego Star Wars. Come on. Um, of course, a man has fallen in the river in Lego City. A man has fallen in the river in Lego City. What's it from again? It's the adverts. Oh, I see. Quick, build the helicopter. Hey. <laughs> oh, superb. So the answer was a man. Uh, Black Friday. It was of course. The Lego movie itself was an advert. Imagine. On YouTube. Uh, the facial feature is nose. I guess we'll also give you ears, though. Sure. We, were after, we were after nose, though. And you can't... We're not giving eyelashes or teeth or whatever. Just, just, put, just have written down nose. Come on. Um, Lego The Hobbit. This is, you can, of course, play as a stone giant. Mad. A stone giant. And the uh, following... And Game of Thrones is not a Lego theme. There's a Stranger Things one, there's a Friends one, but there's not a Game of Thrones one. I guess so it's not really their target market. Is... You've got any Friends friends? Friends who like Friends? Um, Lego Central Park? Some Lego Friends friends. Um, here we go with our animal multiple choice. Uh, so, here we go. Well. Okay, so, yes, which animal has no expressive muscles on its face, so it always looks like it's smiling? It's a sloth, of course. Sloth, I think quokkas also seem to be smiling, but I think they're fine for muscles. Okay. George Bush received which animal as a present which he donated to Cincinnati Zoo? Komodo dragon. It Probably was called Naga, go. apparently. Okay. Probably wouldn't go down well in the White House. No, <laughs> I imagine not. 
um, there you go. Killer whale undergoes the menopause alongside humans and one unknown other. So you're always in good company. Which of these attached to each other when drifting, when sleeping to stop drifting apart? Otters, very wholesome. Classic otter fact. Which of these does not have three eyelids? It's the snake. Mm. Who'd have thunk? Which has three hearts? Octopus. Yeah, there we go. Hearts, eight legs. Possibly uh, like a weird colour blood. I think it might have blue blood as well. Mm. I don't know. Which of these gr group is known as a pandemonium? Parrot. It's not the La Cruz convention or <laughs> these just before. It's a parrot. <laughs> the shortest lifespan of the three of these is the mayfly. Apparently, the, the, the mayfly only lives for about half an hour. Wow. It's a sad life. Imagine that half an hour as well being in the dark in the north in Durham. <laughs> Poor things. Which of these has fingerprints almost indistinguishable from humans? Koala. And which of these fish is the most venomous? The stonefish. The stonefish. There so we when go. you see that face on the edge of the shipwreck looking at you, that sort of looks like a fish. Not a. It is a fish. Yeah. <laughs> um, don't touch it. <laughs> yeah, I think it's a fish disguised as a stone rather than a stone disguised as a fish. So yeah. <laughs> so it's sort of like a face poking through this stone looking thing if you google it oh, gosh. It's scary. and it looks like just sort of something stuck to a side of the ship's rail that belongs there and it's definitely not like an extreme weaver fish all right then we had our monty python the holy grail round um reminder if you get best team name then you can pick around for next week so get thinking um so the year was 1975 what a great year what a strong, a strong year for for Universities all all year round, all all round. Um, this was the Oxford Review, of course, the Oxford Review. Um, Australia. Uh, my dad's pointed out to me before that on quiz programs, whenever they say um, a Commonwealth country, it's always Australia. Occasionally New Zealand, but normally it's Australia. <laughs> um, Robert Plant and Jimmy Page were in Led Zeppelin. Led Zeppelin. Um, Ahad Grails is Sir Galahad. Sir Galahad. Um, is the Holy Hand Grenade of Antioch. Holy Hand Grenade of Antioch. Of course, the Holy Hand Grenade also in um, the in Worms. Um, question number seven. It was Spamalot. Spamalot. Um, the Stanley Cup is in ice hockey. The uh, neologism you might have been able to work this out is Python-esque, also relating to the operating system Python. Python-esque. Um, and this, of course, this this beast of a question was Luau. Luau. Luau, Luau is French for wow. Is, is that true as a French student? Le, le wow. Le wow. No, what is French for wow? Both. I don't think they have a word for wow. They're not that excited creatures. <laughs> um, here, just to clarify, here at the Verne because we do not believe that the French are creatures. Um, we, Slamer, we, please don't come after me. Please uh, we, internship. <laughs> these are not necessarily the, these are not the views of of uh, he'll be national as a whole. Um, then we had a wipeout. Oh, well, go ahead. What type of animal makes up the genus Cygnus? Swan, signet. Nice. Yeah. Reminder: if any of these are wrong, you get zero for the entire round. Yes. Two. How many vowels are there in the Teletubbies combined? Eight. It's eight. You might have wiped out on this. Lala is spelt with four A's. L-A-A, L-A-A. -A -A. Oh, brilliant. There you go. It's not Lala, -la, is it? No, it's Lala. -la. Come on. Some scholars suggested that Elhanan, son of Jer, was originally listed, yada, 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 Goliath. Goliath. You can also have, if you've written the name in Arabic, but I didn't write it down because I thought it was unlikely. Um, Regency yep. period occurred during the reign of George III. Of course, the regent being later George IV, but the king at the time was George III. There you go. The name of the Jackson 5 Christmas album is... Oh, you're going to like this. You never guess what it is. Christmas album. It's called Christmas album. Brilliant. <laughs> it's called Christmas album. I guess Imagine... that helps when you're trying to search for Christmas albums and you just do that and then... Great you marketing go. tactics. Like ABBA, first in the phone book. Oh, I mean... Until Aardvarks got involved in that uh, the earlier question. Who wrote Middlemarch? George Eliot. George Eliot, classic. 
how many white stars are on Australian flag? Six. There's one big one that represents something, and then five other ones which represent something else. There you go. Checkmate for white is queen to f7. Yeah, queen to f7 because it, it doesn't work if you do if you do queen to to e6 because then the pawn could take. So mm-hmm. it has to be queen to f7. There we go. Who won Love Island 2019? I believe it's Amber and Greg. Yes. Amber and Greg, yeah. Nicely done. Um, and the final question of the quiz. What's the link? No. <laughs> How old is Boris Johnson? Five He's five foot nine. Average height. So you can have anything from five eight to five ten. Uh Will, do you want to make the Hilby SLC post? Yes, I shall. Um, nice. So, while we Will's going to make a post on Hilby SRC pay uh, post, so where um, so do head over to the page Hilby SRC on Facebook and comment your team name and your score once you've added it all up. Reminder: the the winner will get a special prize today, and the winning team name will get to pick a round for the next quiz. Yeah, the post is published. The post is published. So head over to Hilby SLC Facebook page and post those scores. We'll get to those shortly. But first, it's time for a, for a new segment. Um, oh, no. Those familiar with the quiz may remember that we have quite often have a round called Are You Smarter than, than, a, than a Social Sec? We've also had a variant called Are You Smarter Than an SU Rap when Kieran came on as a guest. Um, but of course, we're, we're, we're with the one and only vice president now. And so I thought, <laughs> What, what better than to have? Who wants to be a trillionaire? Ter- <laughs> Who wants to be a trillionaire? Ter- oh, uh, this is so brilliant! This is our show where uh, Will here, Will Terrell, vice president of Hilby SLC, has the chance to win one million pounds, courtesy what? of Jack Rawdon. He doesn't know about wow. this. Wow! Uh, so play along at home. See how you do. That's a large um, overdraft. I have to say. For you. <laughs> Honestly, he's, he's okay. He's got a student loan, I imagine. Um, so, are you ready to play for a, for a million pounds potentially? I am. And I thought, as it's, as it's a special subject of yours, um, you, you you you're into rowing, aren't you? You could say that, I guess. Yeah. So I decided to make all the questions about rivers. Okay. Okay. So here we go. If you, if you made a roundabout but rowing for one thousand two hundred, no, for one hundred twenty-five thousand pounds. For oh, here we go. Big money. So, Will, the mouth of the River Plym lies close to which English city? Is it A, Exeter, B, Bristol, C, Truro, or D, Plymouth? Hmm. Mm. Mm. I know it's not Exeter mm-hmm. because um, I've rode at Exeter mm-hmm. and I know that's not what the river is called. Good knowledge. I'm go with Plymouth. Interesting. Could it Final be the round of the round of the Let's see if you've just won one hundred twenty-five thousand pounds. It was. Congratulations. Oh, yay. oh, well done. I'm afraid you haven't got any lifelines. You've you've you run you've run out of life, lifelines in the run-up to this score. Oh, have Don't I? Don't worry, because the next question is for a quarter of a million pounds. Which okay, here we go. Which large mammal has a name meaning horse of the river? Which okay. large mammal has a name meaning horse of the river? Is it rhinoceros? Is it elephant? Is it hippopotamus or is it wildebeest? I'm pretty sure it's hippopotamus. He's going with hippopotamus. Let's see if you're right. For a quarter of a million pounds, have, have you won it? Courtesy of Jack Rawdon. It wasn't a hippopotamus. Very nicely done. Brilliant. Oh, you're next. You're nearly. Uh, uh, so the next question is, of course, for, for half a trillion pounds. Which of the following Michaels is most associated with river dance? Which Michael. of the following Michaels is, is most associated with river dance? Is it? Michael Flatley, Michael Bublé, Michael Johnson, Michael Rosen. Michael Flatley. He's going with Michael Flatley. Is it? Is it Michael Flatley? It is Michael Flatley. Who would have thought? Next, next stop. Lord of the Dance. It's, it's, it's interesting how I don't seem to have an animation for if you get the question wrong. Um, it's fine. <laughs> so for for a trillion pounds, let's see if you've done it. What did Hillbeat SLC president Joseph Cheadle at? Uh, uh, 1447 today say was his favorite river it's a classic question for 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 a trillion pounds 
Is it the Weir? Is it the Trent? Is it the Seine? Seine. Or is it the Limpopo? SLC mm. President jo Joseph Cheadle. Joseph Cheadle, yep. Yeah. That, okay. Um, uh, 1457, uh, so... Talk, talk, talk me through your, your thought process here. You well, thinking? I'm just thinking about the sort of the staging of this question. 1447, of course, Joseph Cheadle wasn't in the management meeting, so possibly could have given his answer at that time. Mm. Um, I don't know. I've never even heard of the Limpopo. <laughs> But maybe he's said that because it's got a cool name. Maybe. I, was, I asked him the question without any context and he replied not needing any context with his answer. Oh, not needing any context. Well, then I have to go to Limpopo. If, it's Limpo if Limpopo is right and I haven't chosen it, I'm going to be sad at myself. You're going with Limpopo. The Weir, of course, the, the river in the city where he is SLC president. The Trent, of course, the river near, near, his, ho near his hometown where he lives mm -hmm. near Stoke. The Seine, of course, in France, I guess, which we probably have some connection to, but did he say Limpopo for a trillion pounds? <sighs> Is oh, Limpopo, he congratulations, he's done it. Courtesy of Jack Rawdon, you have absolutely won a trillion pounds. Brilliant. Um, Jack, uh, I'll send you my sort of code and account number in due course. <laughs> oh, brilliant news. Um, so there we go. Uh, what are you going to do with your newfound winnings? Um, college day fund. <laughs> <laughs> That's quite right. It's put it put it straight back into the SSC funds. Yeah. Um, we're going we're going big for college day, guys. We're going to get Drake. <laughs> huge news, right? Here we go. The biggest it's action. time for the results. So well, we haven't got me yet, me yet. But I'm going to do to you what I normally do to Jack, which is um, mercil mercilessly mock you. No, it's going to be read you some team names and you have to decide which you reckon is the best one. We've only got three. We've only got three, but you shouldn't be looking at them anyway. But it's fine. Oh, sorry. Where's Annabelle's house? Honestly, we maybe we're waiting for a few. Um, oh, we've got some good names so far. Oh, I hadn't thought about Anglesey. Maybe Anglesey's after the Isle of Wight. Let's hope so. Hmm. But I trust Jack on the geography question. Oh, it's a good point. How did I know um, Cheadle's last name? I just, I mean, Cheadle is obviously his first name. And I just threw J Joseph in there because he thought he, I know he's a Tito fan. Um, here we it's go. Like, well, his last name. <laughs> it's like, it's like, what, is this, what could it be? Oh, oh, here we go. Iconic status. They've got Beyonce, Drake, Obama, Cheadle, Cheryl. <laughs> <laughs> it's, we've got all the, we've got all the celebrities, the friends of the show, right? So I'm gonna I'm gonna read you some some team names. You get to pick your favorite. Lovely. Um. Okay. This is this is one of the team names. This quiz made me more uncomfortable than an Andy Beresford lecture. Have you have you have you had Spanish professor professor Andy Beresford? I'm pretty sure I've meant to have had him as a lecturer. Whether he, I talks, actually... he talks a lot about about sexual things, and it is and in a very intense way, and it's quite uncomfortable. Um, or will you pick the team those. name? I don't know if I actually watched any of his lectures last year. That's okay. Will it be the team name Lego Lass? Lego Lass. Yes, that's a strong, strong. Strong pun. Or will it be <laughs> spam a lot, get the questions right a little? <laughs> Not really sure how that's related to spam a lot, but I think they, they, they make a good point on my poor pronunciation. No, that's good. Is it going to be spamming a lot or getting questions right a little? You know? Hmm. Uh, so, what are you thinking? I'm not sure. Hmm. Lego Lass does. I think that's probably the best one, making sort of the the link between two rounds that's in the pun. Always, always what we like to see. Are, are we giving the win to Lego Lass then? I believe so. Yes. Brilliant. So there we go. So very well done, Team Lego Lass. 
Um, you get the specials round. Next week, so yes. So there we go. And the winner of the people who have sent in answers. Oh, we've got joint winners. We've got a draw. Marcus with Tis But a Scratch and Annabelle with This Quiz Made Me More Uncomfortable Than an Andy Beresford Lecture. Um, with 34 points, nicely done. Um, so very well done, you've won. And you get this special message from the he who cannot be here right now, who's definitely not currently in the Zoom call. Um, it's this lovely message from Jack Rowan. This is your prize. He says, hi all, I've headed home to Suffolk for Christmas. I'm spending, spending tonight doing a, a bit of hiking in my local area. As you can see, it's really not as flat as people say it is. I'll be back next week. No, don't worry. In the meantime, I hope people have had a brilliant quiz and congratulations to the winners. See you all soon from Jack. Isn't that lovely? So there we go. So very well done to the winners. Very well done to the winners of the team name who, <laughs> who have picked the specialist round Germanic board games. Oh my gosh. Thank you to my brother for picking the specialist round Germanic board games. Good luck writing that one over the weekend, Hugo. No, I can't wait. Um, so very much, very thank you. <laughs> very thank you to everyone for watching. Very thank you to Will. Thank you very um, much for having me. Pleasure as always. Um, there we go. And that's the that's the quiz, I, I guess. That's the quiz. Um, how do we stop the YouTube live stream? Jack, come back. <laughs> I said Jack's there. We'll see if he, he manages to do it. If he manages it magically from his from his hill journeying in. Oh, oh, there's a Jack. If he doesn't make a noise, then we won't be able to see him on the live.